Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, we say that quite often, but boy, it really is. It's a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord. We thank you for tuning in with us this morning and being a part of our family Bible study hour. Uh, we are this morning going to be in the book of Obadiah, uh, another of the uh, minor prophets, and uh, we, we call them minor, uh, not through the subject, uh, but because of the length of writings that they do. And uh, we have uh, Obadiah that we're going to go through this morning, and it's not a very long uh, book. Uh, it's just uh, one chapter, 21 verses, uh, but we're going to cover all of it this morning. If you'll grab your Bible and open up to the book of Obadiah, uh, we'll get started. And while you're turning this morning, we'll ask Father for his blessings. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask, Father, that your word would land on fertile ground this morning. Open eyes and open ears. And, Father, we just thank you again for all that you do. We ask, Lord, that you would allow this word, Father, and that to go into the hearts and the minds of the people for this holiday season. Father, that they may understand more of your word. Father, we love you, and we thank you for all that you do. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Obadiah. In the Hebrew, the word Obadiah means the servant of God, the servant of Yahweh. And that's what you are. Uh, that's what you have been known to be is a servant of God. And uh, if you love God's word and you study God's word in depth and uh, uh, you began to get wisdom, you see understanding God's word uh, brings wisdom to an individual. And uh, that's what is needed in this latter day. Uh, it's not just enough to uh, have a friend that knows about the word of God. It's not enough to say that you got your letter uh, in a church and say that you uh, are part of this church and uh, they believe and they know. But friends, it's meant for an individual to know the word of God. It's meant for an individual to study to show themselves approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2 and 15. And it's so important that we do these things. And uh, this book of Obadiah, it's speaking there to Edom. Uh, this is uh, of Russia. And uh, don't have to go into too much explanation, but uh, people do understand that this nation of uh, Russia is communist. And uh, so they do not believe that there is a God. They do not believe that God reigns and rules and uh, all things are prophesied in this life. But while we're on that subject this morning, I want to turn to Hebrews chapter 11 real quick. And I'm going to read one scripture for you. Hebrews 11. And verse number, let's read verse 5. Hebrews 11 and 5. And it reads, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. What does it take to please God? It takes doing God's will. Enoch was in a time when Man was very evil, and the bloodline of the election, God's chosen, were being distorted. And it was being distorted all the way to the bloodline of the Messiah. And Enoch was there preaching, prophesying against these individuals. And it got such a mess that God said, I'll just go down there and get him. And God loved him. God loved Enoch, and he loved him enough and that to take him from the troubles in this world. Verse 6 is why I came. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God without having faith, knowing whom he is, knowing that he holds your tomorrow, knowing that there isn't chance in this world, Many people would like to use that word chance. Well, it was by chance this happened, and it was by chance that this worked out, and it was by chance that I was able to do it. No, friends. Chance is not used in the Word of God. 
It was divine intervention. It was the plan of God. That's why things have happened in your life. That's why things of good have come out in your life, because your faith in believing. So it says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's what you're doing this morning. That's why you tune in to the fresh start or to ministries of the same. And enjoy the word of God because you are out to, well, diligently seek his word and to know more about the word of God. So, here we are in the book of Obadiah. We, of the Christian nations, being opposite from Edom because we have faith in God and we believe that God can and will and therefore we wait upon God. So that being said, let's go to Obadiah verse 1 and it reads, The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, and Edom, uh, in your Strong's, in the Hebrew, is uh, 123. And it means uh, red and uh, uh, referred to as uh, Rosh or Russia of today. So it says here, concerning Edom, uh, we have heard a rumor from the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Edom being this communist nation, communism meaning that they do not believe in God, uh, before uh, East Germany won its freedom, Poland and many other nations freed themselves from the stronghold of the uh, anti-God system of the Soviet Union. And they withdrew and no longer were they there. So it says here, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent uh, to the heathen. Now, you say, well, why was their word sent to the heathens? Well, you see, the heathens that he's speaking of is the heathen nations. And you say, well, why was it that uh, an ambassador was sent? Why was it that word was sent? Before we get started too far in the book of Obadiah, let me explain that Communism, the belief that there is no God, will not allow the Antichrist to come in. So, the communist wall had to fall. The communist work of all of the nations has to fall. Now, granted, we're not speaking of the people in Russia. We're speaking of the nation of Russia and what they stand for. And Father's controversy is against Esau. And uh, we'll see more of that here in just a moment. But uh, we read here that there was an ambassador sent. And why was he sent? Well, to bring people away from this communism, to allow the Antichrist to come in. Now you say, well, now, God... God inspired that kind of thing? He, he, he allowed this to happen? Of course he has. Remember that Father has a negative plan. And the more that you understand that God has a negative plan, then you can understand the positive side of God's plan. Uh, and we've said it many times and say it again, that uh, if they want to be damned and believe a lie, then let them. There is a book that is given. And there are uh, many that will study and learn God's word, but there are many that will not. And so in this flesh life, if you desire to uh, be one of those that endure to the end, if you desire to be one of those, you're in your family, to, to be here waiting for Christ when he comes, I'm talking about the true Christ, then you will know the difference. You will understand that God has a plan and that you are to follow that plan. And that plan, if you follow that plan, there is a great reward given for that. You, you, 
Well, I, I believe I heard somebody say, well, what is the reward? The reward is, is that if you endure the flesh, that when you enter into the millennial, not if, but when you enter into the millennial, you will enter in, and therefore the second death will have no power. You will enter in and become the Zadok. You will do the work for the Lord. So we see here that he said in verse 1, Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Now, this battle is not a physical battle, but it's a spiritual battle. This spiritual battle that is coming that you and I know very uh, wisely about this spiritual battle that it's all over the world today. And uh, it's distorting the word of God. Uh, but with wisdom, uh, we can understand God's word. We can understand that God has a plan. And that's what he asked you to do. Verse number two. Behold, I, meaning Yahweh, I have made thee small among the heathen, the heathen nations. Uh, thou art greatly despised. And he's speaking that of Edom. He's speaking that of the ways that they live uh, and the things that they do. How they derive these concepts in their minds. They sit in their uh, evenings and they think of they being the nations of Edom. They think of ways to uh, deceive people and to overtake other nations and to bring in all of these uh, uh, wealth and goods. Why is that? Well, verse number three says it. He said, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Though thou dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Where have you heard this at? You've heard it, and it's virtually the same thing that was spoken about in Isaiah chapter number 12, or excuse me, chapter number 14, verse 12. And he's talking about Lucifer uh, when he exalted himself above the throne of God. And uh, that was some of the things that he had said, uh, who shall bring me down to the ground? Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle... And though thou set the nest among the stars, uh, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Father has a controversy against Esau, and it's, uh, it's written in Malachi chapter 1 and in Romans chapter 9. He said that Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Now, he didn't proclaim this after these men had grown and, and d done some work, he proclaimed this, he being the father, he proclaimed this while they were still yet in the womb. You say, well, how in the world would God know what these men are going to do? It's not what they're going to do. It's what they have done. It's about their actions in the first earth age. It's about what Esau desired in the first earth age. The problem with Esau was uh, is uh, that he gave up his birthright for a bowl of porridge, uh, well, uh, lentil soup, and he sold it. He had no desire for the, for the uh, birthright, meaning that he was the firstborn, meaning that he was uh, to be given uh, uh, all that was to come to him. I want to say that if man is not careful, he'll take and exhort himself and to uh, bring himself above what he is. It's very important that we stay humble in this day. It's very important that we stay as humble as possible. Now, I'm not meaning to uh, let somebody uh, cow you down or beat you down, you see, uh, because you are a child of the king. And a child of the king does not have to live that way. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. And it come from Emmanuel. It came from God being with us through Christ Jesus. And the blood that he shed on Calvary, how that we have become his children. And we do not have to be a part of this. Now in verse 4, he said, uh, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, let me ask you, 
Which nation today reminds you of the eagle? That's right. That's the Americas. And it also is depict of that in Deuteronomy 32 and 11, that where God says, I will place you uh, on my wings as an eagle, and I will carry you and do for you. So he said, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, you try to make yourself uh, this that you think you are, and then again, Russia likes to think that they are a superpower, but they're not. Russia is nothing but a bunch of beggars. They have had to beg for everything they have gotten, and uh, through their uh, technology and their, their teaching and things of that nature, they leave these people without training. And you wonder, well, the, they've got all of the, the newest equipment, they've got all the newest uh, uh, tanks and aircrafts and all these things, but yet they do not know how to utilize them properly. And God sees fit. He'll put a stupor in these people's minds, and he will confuse them. But verse number five, he said, If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would not they leave some grapes? He's talking about how that, uh, Russia has claimed that they have been beaten down and they have been taken from and all these things. And again, that's what God said. If a robber came, would he not just take what he wanted and leave and leave the other things behind? It wasn't done through other nations. How was it done? <laughs> God done the stripping. And it was worse than any robber could ever thieve. You see, God placed it in the life of Esau, that he would not prosper, that he would not have prosperity, that he would be in a barren land. And that's exactly where he's at. Verse 6 and verse 7. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee uh, have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. This, here it says in verse 7, he says, uh, All the men of the Confederacy, and this is uh, the Warsaw Pact that was made, and these were all that were uh, collated together uh, of the nations. He says, And the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. Who are these? Well, these nations are China, Cuba, Nicaragua, Egypt, Libya, all of these nations. They've all sat in amongst with Russia, and uh, they have eaten their bread, and but yet they have laid a, a wound under them. What is this wound that is given them? Uh, it's poverty. It's their own poverty. We've seen in our day when the people of Russia, their people, had to go out and try to find food. The stores were bare. They were out in the streets begging for something to eat. Now, what kind of a superpower allows their people uh, in that to starve. There again, he's exalted himself above what he should be, and he's not what he thinks he is. Again, that's why we read Hebrews 11 and 6, because it is the faith that you have. My mother used to have a saying. She'd say, you need to know which side your bread is buttered on. That old saying uh, lets us know that God holds our tomorrow. He holds my tomorrow. I hope he holds yours. I hope he holds everything in your life dear, that's dear to you. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You want reward in this life? You want to live a comfortable life? You want no 
confusion to be in your home. You won't. These things are done because you seek God. When you seek God, you do away with all the confusion. You do away with all of the the uh, the lying and the uh, the evil that's brought into your home and and the evil that's brought around you. When you are a Christ man or a Christ woman, people recognize it eventually. And when they're in the break room telling that little joke, uh, uh, they'll say, well, here she comes. Uh, uh, well, here he comes. Uh, uh, don't say anything else uh, uh, because uh, they, they don't want to hear it. That's right. Because we're Christ men. We're Christ women. We are Christians. And again, Christianity is not a religion, but it's a reality. It's a reality that you live. Christianity is something that you gain from the Father. And we're gaining today. We're gaining wisdom today. Verse number 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau question? He said here in verse 8, Shall I not in that day? What day is he talking about? In that day. The day of the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 39, study that. It goes right along with the book of Obadiah, and it tells you exactly what's going to happen to uh, Esau, to Edom, to Russia. They're going to come up against Father, well, Father's people, our nation to be exact. They're going to come in through uh, the valley through Alaska. And uh, Russia, <laughs> Russia sold Alaska to the Americans for $7 million and some change, which they thought it was nothing. But we, we being America, have found that it is very rich with oil and rich with uh, uh, wild game and uh, beautiful country, beautiful, beautiful place. But Father, and uh, let's not use the word coincidental because it's divine intervention, it's prophesied in Ezekiel chapter 39 uh, that the property that they sold is where they, being the nation of Edom, will be extinguished at that time. So he says in verse 8, Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men in that day? Well, let me turn over here to Ezekiel 39. Let me, let me read that for you real quick, just to, just to bring that out in the in the study, Ezekiel 39, verse 6, he says, uh, And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. They don't believe in God right now. But on that day, they will. 7, So will I make my holy name in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. The day of the Lord. Nine. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the buckler and the bows and the arrows and the uh, hand staffs and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. This battle that will come, it won't last very long at all. It'll come and Father will extinguish these enemy. Uh, with hailstones the size of a talent. That's 180 pound. Right about 180 pound. Can you imagine hailstones falling out of the sky at 180 pound? I don't care what kind of vehicle you're in or tank or whatever. It's going to smash it. It's going to kill it. And it's going to continue uh, until everyone is gone. When will this happen? On the day of the Lord at the last trump, at the coming of Christ. So back in Obadiah, verse number 9, And they, 
and thy mighty men, O Teman, uh, this Teman is uh, southern Russia, he said, and thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. What type of slaughter? Through deception. You see, you don't have to raise a sword or a bomb or uh, use any type of weaponry against them because this slaughter comes through deception. They are deceived. First and foremost, they do not believe in God. Had they believed in God, they would have read the book of Obadiah. They would have studied Ezekiel chapter 39. They would have seen in the book of the Revelation that there was going to be a war against Edom. But they do not. Therefore, deception uh, is their biggest enemy. Verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. The violence, communist atheism, is the violence that was used against thy brother Jacob. And in, his, in Genesis 27, we read in Genesis 27 that In verse 41, I'll, uh, I'll back up to verse 40. Genesis 27 and verse 40, and it reads, And by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. Now, let me ask you, do you think that Russia has lived by the sword? <laughs> they've, they've been in battle since the beginning of time. And that by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, uh, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing uh, wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother. This was in his heart. This was in his mind. You see, Father is a cardio-knower, and he knows the hearts of even Esau. And he knew what was on his mind, and that to destroy uh, Jacob, to destroy uh, Israel, to destroy the Christian nations. Verse 11. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates, these, uh, these strangers, he says, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces. And this is talking about Germany at the time when Germany uh, was uh, in, a, in a mode of destruction genocide to destroy what they thought were the Jews. He said, uh, and, and in the day strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou wast one of them. He's saying that you even had the same thought, uh, Russia at the time, even though Russia did help, uh, Liberate one of the, uh, the, the main camps that uh, housed uh, the Americans and the British uh, through prisoners. And uh, they did liberate them at that time. But verse number 12. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Some of this has happened, and much of this is yet to come in the near future. And that's exactly what they will do. Uh, they will boast, they being the communist nation of Esau, 
of Russia. They will boast about how that Judah has fallen. Verse 13, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. This is the taking of the property of the Jews uh, and through their uh, policies and their ways and how that they've came up. Verse 14, Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those uh, of his uh, that did remain in the day of distress. If you're old enough, you should remember November the 9th, 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down and uh, made it possible uh, for the East Germans to come and go how they should and to be able to accept Christianity in their nation. How did this happen? How did the wall come down? Well, it started with 10 Russian Christians praying. It began with the prayer of 10 Russian Christians. Now, again, this book of Obadiah is not against the people. It's against the system. Now, if a person in that nation desires to follow that system, then that's their downfall. But if a person in that nation desires to follow Christ, it's a hardship. And it's a hardship because it's not looked upon as common as it is in this nation. So, we see here that Uh, He said that to cut off those of his that did escape. Uh, They gunned them down in the streets. They did a lot of awful things. But yet, through the policy, they were supposed to be free. Verse 15, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, these heathen nations, all of the heathen nations, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee, Thy reward shall be upon thine own head. In this generation, the generation of the fig tree, we see that it's important that as much as we don't want for the Antichrist to come in because it is Father's plan. No man is capable of destroying the Antichrist uh, because he, for one, is supernatural and he is working for the plan of God. He's doing God's work, even though, well, just like uh, Nebuchadnezzar was, uh, he was a servant of God. Even though he done evil at that time, the same will be for the Antichrist. And he said in Ezekiel 38, in verse 18, And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. The indignation will come up into the face of Father. You say, Father has a face? Of course he has a face. We are made in the similitude of God. We are likened unto him. Therefore, he has feelings. He has emotions. He has uh, laughter and joy. And he also has indignation. And that's when it will come up. Verse 16. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen nations drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. What is he talking about here, Brother Randall? He's talking about this second tribulation. He's talking about Revelation chapter 16, 
the vials that are poured out upon the people. These vials will pour out. The, uh, it, this isn't, this isn't a, a bowl or a cup or a bucket that's poured out. It's like a dish. And when a liquid is put on that dish and poured out, what does it do? It goes everywhere and covers everything. And that's exactly how it will work. It will affect those uh, that have not the seal of God in their forehead. It will affect those uh, uh, that have uh, no desire to follow God. And we see here in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39 what Christ had said as he had come to the garden. In verse 39 he said, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, O oh, my Father, if it be possible... Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. This cup that he's talking about, it's not that he was concerned about going to the cross. He was not concerned about his own hide. He was not concerned about his own flesh. For this reason is why he came. He came to be a perpetuation for sin. He came to be the Lamb of God, sacrificed for mankind. He came to shed his blood so that you and I would not have to pay for our sins. That's not why Christ cried. He cried, he said, Oh, my Father, if it were possible, let this cup pass from me, this cup of wrath that will be poured out upon the people is what he desired. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done, Father. And it will be done. It will be done exactly how Father said it would be. Now, we have covered from 1 through 16, and as we enter into uh, verse 17, we're, we're stepping into the millennial now. So, so take your minds into the millennial. Verse number 17 but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. You know why God will make deliverance upon Mount Zion? It's where Jesus paid the price for your sins and my sins on that mount. He said, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. This house of Jacob, uh, this is the comprised all 12 tribes. And uh, we have uh, in Joel, in Joel's prophecy, what Father said in Joel 2 and 32, or excuse me, Joel 2 and 23, he said, I, And I will sow her unto me in the earth, Jezreel. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. This is the promise that Father said he would give. If you are triumphant, if you serve the living God. Verse 18. And the house of Jacob, being all twelve tribes, shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And they shall, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. You say, well, oh my gosh, he's going to destroy all the people? That's not what he's talking about. He's saying in that day, what day? The day of the Lord, when we enter into the millennial that there will no longer be a Russian nation. Why is that? Because all nations will be dissolved. There won't be an America. There won't be a China. There won't be any of these nations. There will only be one nation. And it will all be under Christ. For he will be king of kings and lord of lords in that day. So there will only be one nation on that day. Verse 19, and they of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau. 
and they of the plain the Philistines. And they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilad. These are the possessions that Father will give to his children. Verse 20, And the captivity of the host, the host being all twelve tribes, of the children of Israel shall possess uh, that of the Canaanites, even unto uh, Zarephath. And the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sherephad, shall possess the cities uh, of the south. In the book of Hosea, chapter 2, we have just read that. I just read to you exactly what God said he would do for his children. Because they, in a place where they were not called his children, where they were not given God the honor and the glory, they have returned. Ami versus low Ami. Ami being my people. Verse 21 to come to a close. He said, and saviors uh, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Who are the saviors, Brother Randall? Who are these saviors that's going to come and, uh, uh, and take the Mount of Esau? These are the Zadok. These are the sons of Zadok. And that's what Father says one will be uh, when they enter into the millennial if they are free from sin of this flesh life, if they no longer carry the condemnation of this world, how do we get rid of the condemnation of this world? Through repentance on a daily basis. Repentance through Jesus Christ. That's the only way uh, that you can be forgiven of your sins in this day. And it takes not just a one-time repentance, but an everyday repentance. And we've spoke about that many times, about the washing of the feet, how that Father uh, has given us understanding through Christ that uh, even going through the bathhouse and taking your daily bath, traveling from the bathhouse back to your home, your feet would get dirty because you had open sandals at the time. And there was needs for you to wash your feet again, even if that you had cleansed everything, washed your hair, and all the way down to your feet. There was still need. The same concept comes through repentance, that we are to repent on a daily basis. And Savior shall come upon the mount. In Ezekiel chapter 44, we see here, Ezekiel 44 and verse 15, he said, but the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that keep the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near me, near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me uh, the fat of the blood, saith the Lord God. And uh, through ignorance through unlearning many people would like to say you know on that first day I'm going to run up and and hug Jesus and kiss him and and kiss his hands and his feet where the nails had pierced him and and and, and love it that's not going to happen that that won't happen the only ones that can come near to the Lord at that day are the sons of Zadok the just they are the ones that are entrusted to be the saviors. They are the ones that are entrusted to do the work of the Lord. And as we have said many times, that there's not a lot of us. There's not a lot of the election. The election are few and far between. And we have it documented here in Amos chapter 5 and verse number 3. 
He said, For thus saith the Lord God, The city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred, and that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. So when you search for wisdom and understanding, and you search for people with knowledge and truth, there's not going to be a lot that you'll find. For the word tells us that they're few and far between. But yet, God is waking them up this morning. God is doing all that he can in that to bring them up out of them dead, dry bones and prophesying the word of God to them. That's the book of Obadiah. We, we pray that uh, it had been a help to you this morning. Uh, we know that it was a short book, and uh, we know that the subject uh, is about uh, faith in God. We, we pray that your faith uh, has grown stronger uh, uh, in the last few months, in the last few days, in uh, the last few years. And we pray that your faith is strong because it will be the faith that you will need uh, in this latter day. Uh, we speak many times about the uh, book of Ephesians, chapter 6, that we are to put on the full armor of God. And uh, the shield of faith is very important in that day. We appreciate you. Thank you again for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, we are going through our uh, holiday seasons. There are a few sicknesses here and there, and that's common. That's just things that happen, and uh, the weather changes. People are going to get a little sick. Uh, but we uh, are praying for those that are sick, and we pray for you. We pray for understanding and that you grow in the Lord. And uh, we appreciate you. Thank you again for your cards and letters. And uh, we appreciate all of the Christmas cards. What a blessing it is to have the Christmas cards and have them come in. It's just a blessing here at Fresh Start. And uh, if we've helped you, pray for us, would you? Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless.